Hey, hey, hey. Now we have a B20 VTEC all motor project that will turn into a series. And as you know, like the previous one, we go into detail on everything. So you know you're gonna enjoy this, so subscribe. Let's go. All right, the setup goes, it will have Pro 2 cams, 70 millimeter throttle, Golden Eagle cam gears, ported ITR manifold, one up pistons, and we'll discuss every single detail to why and how we do things. But for now, let me talk about something really important. Now the topic on hand is all about rod bearings. This is a ACL race rod bearing and this is an ITR rod which has the same features as the B16 rods. Notice the slits or the sledge. It promotes throwing oil to underside of the piston for cooling. And as we know B16, CTR and ITR blocks has an oil thrower or oil jet underneath to, f to further cool the pistons. It needs that much. All right. Now let's get the B20 rods. It has the one up pistons already pressed. I want to show you something here. And you will notice the B20 rods has an oil hole on the bearing. It goes through the saddle onto, onto the neck of the rods. This serves as the oil jet. There's no ridge on the side and you can see it it goes through and through. Let me show you with a wire. There. It squirts oil to underneath the pistons for further cooling. So when you think about it, the B16 bearings, while it fits the B20 rod bearings or rods, it's not going to have an oil spray underneath the pistons. You can see it goes in and out see it goes through and through that's an oil jet so if you put a b16 rod bearing that means you're not cooling your pistons so think about it you're gonna start melting pistons and if you melt pistons you're gonna start insisting that the pistons couldn't handle it so you're gonna go forged and if you go forged pistons, the boards will no longer last. It'll either crack or scratch. So before we start blaming things, let's understand the whole concept of the engine. Here you can see the bearing. There's no hole. And so how is it gonna, how is it gonna get cooled with the pistons? Or, you know, it's just gonna go melt away. So it's one of the things that you got to think about, you know, because engine parts and even surplus engines are actually getting more expensive. So let's be smart about it. All right. And the thing is, no one's going to admit they made that mistake. So the owner's responsibility is to make sure they observe well or check everything with what the builder is doing or building. And as for the builders or shops, this just gives a chance to double check everything when you're building it, you know? There's no room for error because parts are expensive, you know? And this is not on pushing blame or who is better or we are better than others. No, basically it's, it's to help the customers be more knowledgeable because it's their responsibility to go to whatever shop they want to go to that they think they would go faster. And for shop owners, this is their chance to show how good they are. Even, even I have room for improvements, a lot actually. So going back to the B20 rods and the one-up pistons, this is exactly the same as Jasper, who owns ECU Later. His EF that you can click up here, 
that's been running for four years running 12.5 seconds no trailer pump gas and technically technically a legit street car now onto the head it's already ported but we'll show you a recap now onto the head this is the roughed out ports so we're gonna go to the second stage this is a 120 grit we've done this before with 80 grit and the whole video just dedicated the head works or porting on this head is up here so you can just go through it and study it better but aside from that you gotta check the main how-to video that we started that talks more about the theories or what to widen or what to fix on the other video that we'll have in the description below. The exhaust ports are starting to look really good. With the 120 grit, the port texture or finish is starting to get to the point that is starting to look like it's gonna reach the finished stage of how we want them. We want it quite smooth. This way, the carbon buildups won't be weird or unusual, you know? So now onto the floor. You can actually see it's getting better and better. Yeah! Now here we are looking at the finished exhaust ports. It's really smooth. It's achieved the shape and contours that we actually like. For a better visual, we're going to use light now. As you can see, all the curves are really good. Or it's showing consistency. That's why we use light. It helps us see the unevenness or the unusual bumps that is not visible without light. And now you can actually imagine this is going to flow really, really good. And here are the images just to give you guys better visual. The exhaust ports are looking really good, hey? Now on to the intake. Here we are starting on the intake bowls. We use 80 grit and you gotta watch the video that's all about porting this exact head. It talks about the steps and the kinds of grit that we went through for the intake and the exhaust. So you can see it's getting to its shape that we actually shoot for. All right, now we invert it so that we can work on the roof. We have to try to feel it, you know, just so that it remains consistent because factory ports are slightly slanted on one side. So you gotta port it to balance the shape. And here we are on the floor. It's getting cleaner as you can obviously see. Now we go back to the roof and spray it a bit so we can continue to achieve the actual finish that we want. That is not too smooth, but not too rough that it hinders flow. With the ethanol mix that we use, that has a bit of dishwashing soap, it actually lets it stay clean, or at least looks bright and clean, though it lets us visualize the whole port better. Um, you can see the consistent finish and we'll make another pass on the eight on the 80 grit just to make it really smooth and clean and that's gonna be the finished port good now one last pass on the bowls just to get absolute consistency from the port to the seat now let's show you the finished product. Now here is the finished intake ports. Overall, the head is finished. You can see it's gone really, really nice. Good. Here are the images with the proper light. You can see 
the consistent contours, it's going to be super, super efficient and produces good torque. And you can see the consistent port side walls, the short turn, even the divider. It's going to be flowing really, really good. As you can see, the bowl is not totally hogged out, so it's still going to contain good airspeed. Here it is with a proper light. This is about it for a good horsepower making cylinder head. Now on to more of the block work. Here we mic the crank with a micrometer that has a 0 0.0001 accuracy. Head and block are both sandblasted so it's really really clean. ARP rod bolts that are so soon to be stretched. Ring gaps are checked as usual. And of course, piston rings are to be clocked. And then next is we assemble the bottom end.